It's safe to say that AI causes lots of controversy in all sorts of fields these days. And yes, when it comes to AI-generated art, personally, I find it soulless, generic and kind of defeating the purpose of why I got into the whole creative field. I mean, yeah, some of it is fun, but replacing artists? Come on. However, I'm not ignorant and I know that AI is probably the future. And there are certainly uses for AI, like figuring out your UVs or AI motion capture, rotoscoping and retopology. I think that it would be amazing if AI helped me do the job faster and better. And fortunately, some time ago, Adobe finally decided to join the future and introduced AI to Photoshop in a form of a real handy prompt tool that is always available for you. And controversy aside, this really supercharged some of my workflows when editing images for Heroes of Bronze. In this video, I'll show you exactly how. So when you open up the latest versions of Photoshop, right off the bat, you'll probably notice this pop-up menu here. And the first command that you see here is select your subject. This is one of the most convenient tools that this new update provides. And it is quite reliable in selecting and masking your subjects and even recognizing and removing the background with one click. Next up, we're getting into the prompting. With this tool, you can always just lasso select whatever part of your image you don't like or you want changed. And then in this prompt field, you just type in what you want. In my case, I usually type in remove something, but it also allows for more difficult commands. So you're free to experiment with it. And Photoshop then gives you three options to choose from. And if you're not happy with any one of them, you can click generate again and it will give you more options. So yeah, usually if you just try long enough, you will reach some usable result. It's great that you can often just type in remove and the AI will figure out what is in the image and how to remove it. It often does a decent job and it puts the result onto a special layer. So nothing is ever removed or deleted. This option often saves me a lot of time when I don't want to go into the 3D software to re-render some images. Instead, I just AI remove it here in Photoshop. Something that would normally take me minutes retouching is now done in a matter of seconds with several options to choose from. This next option is amazing if you want to reformat your images that you may have rendered out cropped and you just want to extend them in a certain way. So make sure you have this generative expand active here when you are extending your image with this crop tool. Then hit generate. And once more you get these results on a special layer. So it's super convenient. It handles patterns and nature especially well. Less so with humans. But with this tool, I've extended so many of my renders and was able, for example, to put them into Instagram stories. So making your square images into vertical ones is definitely a great use for this. And finally, there is the option to completely experiment with what you want to do with your images. For example, write in make painterly to this photo. And by default, it gives you something like this, which is not really what we're after. However, there is an option to make the effect less intense. You can do it through a quick mask. For that, just hit Q, uh, then Shift and Backspace to fill the mask with this sort of color, this 30% uh, gray. And that essentially didn't make a fully opaque mask, rather it made a 30% opaque mask. And now, when we hit again Q, go out of the quick mask mode, and type in make painterly again, the effect is so much less intense and it actually resembles painting. This I sometimes use to quickly make backgrounds for my painted characters, usually when I don't have time to paint something on my own. Yeah, this might be the less ethical use of this AI tool, because who knows where the algorithm is sourcing this style from, but it helps me to fill in quickly the less important areas of my images. So what do you think of AI and how do you use it in your work? Definitely let me know in the comments. I'll be very much interested in this topic because like it or not, the AI is probably the future. So we'll have to get used to it and ideally make it work for us. And with that, Happy New Year, everybody. Stay creative and until next time, Martin out.